I'm going to get straight to the point and set the record straight. Dragon Ball Super Goku kind of sucks. He's overhyped. He's overemphasized. People place way too much stock in him. And he is not that much stronger than Goku was at the end of Dragon Ball Z. In fact, I would go so far as to say that y'all overestimate Goku so much in Super, you want to say things like he would as a Super Saiyan Blue one-shot anything in Dragon Ball GT, or people will say that Super Saiyan Red could one-shot Super Saiyan 4. That is absolute garbage. I don't care how many super exciting guides you read and how much power scaling you look at. Just look at feats. What has he accomplished? Now, I get that you younger fans just started getting into the series, and you probably haven't read all the manga from Dragon Ball and Dragon Ball Z, so you're probably just starting out with Dragon Ball Super, and you just assume, well, his hair changes colors all these times, it's the newest series, therefore it must be the strongest. Not necessarily, because you got to remember something. Dragon Ball Super exists for one reason and one reason only, to sell you merchandise, to sell you toys, video games, new movies, it's not there to tell you a good story. It's there to sell you stuff. And keeping all those different transformations is simply because they know that the kids like seeing different hair colors. But the way they actually write the feats of these transformations, they're nothing special. So you have to actually look at the writing. Don't just look at, ooh, it changes color. Because if you look at it, what they basically did was they reset Goku in certain ways just to show you the character arc of him progressing because rather than actually be creative and tell a new story they've just been recycling stuff from Dragon Ball and Dragon Ball Z left and right it's nothing new it's nothing special basically Dragon Ball Super has gone the way of Star Wars and Pokemon where they basically ignore the plot retcon whatever they feel like retconning just to get something shiny on the screen and sell you new merchandise now we're going to look at specific examples of how they've reset goku over time and why i am actually going to prove that dragon ball gt goku would absolutely one shot anything that you see in dragon ball super let's look at durability for example goku took one of frieza's lasers to the face and was unfazed and that's just as a Super Saiyan, folks. That's when he just discovered Super Saiyan. Meanwhile, a way more experienced Goku dies to an even weaker laser from Sorbet. Super Saiyan Blue Goku is supposedly, if you look at Seth the Programmer or any, or any of these other power scaling people, he's a, a quintillion times stronger. He's a million times stronger. No, he's not. He's He can't even take a laser. They've reset him. The, these characters are not astronomically stronger than they were before. Kid Goku took a bullet to the chest. He took multiple bullets unfazed. Dragon Ball Super Goku is whining about a freaking scar that he got from a stray bullet. This Goku is way weaker feet wise than even in Dragon Ball. And that's pathetic. They have butchered Goku. As far as I'm concerned, this is not Goku. The way I look at it, Dragon Ball Dragon Ball Z and Dragon Ball Super are all three separate continuities. You can't really reconcile them with crap like this. Now let's look in terms of destructive power. Now here's where I'm just going to spit it out. Goku from Dragon Ball Super is a universe buster. But guess what? So are the end of Z characters. And so are the beginning of Dragon Ball GT characters. Being a universe buster is nothing special. Look at this. Super Buhan almost destroyed a universe. This attack I'm showing you on the screen here was confirmed by Super Vegito to be a universe busting attack. And then Vegito went and canceled that universe busting attack with his own power, proving that if he can cancel out a universe busting attack, that means that he himself can bust a universe. So this fight proves that Super Buhan and Super Vegito are both universe busters. So that fight between Goku and Beerus is nothing special. This might as well be this. They're pretty much the same feat. A universe buster cancels out another universe buster. So Goku going Super Saiyan Red all of a sudden doesn't make him leaps and bounds above the end of Z. If anything, Goku and Super Saiyan Red could probably go a few rounds with Buhan, but that doesn't prove that he's above 
end of Z characters significantly, Gohan was the majority of Buhan's strength, which means that Gohan at the end of Z is bare minimum a 50% universe buster. I'd say he's probably closer to a 60% universe buster, but he was the character that got the most egregiously nerfed in Dragon Ball Super. Think about it. Dragon Ball Z nerfed him, but they didn't nerf him as bad. Because in Dragon Ball Z, between the Cell Saga and Boo Saga, he slacked off and didn't train for seven years. And he dropped down from Super Saiyan 2 level to Super Perfect Cell level. Meanwhile, in Dragon Ball Super, he didn't train for a few months and forgot how to go Super Saiyan. That's just another example of how they egregiously nerfed these characters just to show you a story arc of them getting stronger, even though we already saw that in Dragon Ball Z. Think about how bad they nerfed Gohan, and they nerfed Goku similarly. So this Gohan from the end of Z would probably one-shot Gohan from Dragon Ball Super. Vegeta does a universe-busting attack when he escapes the hyperbolic time chamber by using Super Saiyan Blue to just destroy the entire dimension. In Dragon Ball GT, Goku does that same feat in base form with minimal powering up. I just want to just get you to understand, Vegeta needed Blue to do something that GT Goku did in base with a little bit of powering up. GT Goku is so broken that even in his base form, he's doing comparable feats. Guess what, folks? All these characters on the screen are all relative to each other. There's no significant difference in their feats. All of these characters have performed similar universe-busting Feats. So this whole idea that Super Saiyan Red is just leaps and bounds above End of Z or GT is just bogus. Remember, you have two different tellings of the fight between Goku and Beerus. You have the version that came out as a movie, and you have the version that came out as part of the show. In the version that was part of the movie, Toriyama said that Goku was a little bit above half as strong as Beerus is. Meanwhile, in the actual show of Dragon Ball Super, he's completely irrelevant to Beerus. Because if you look, Champa wasn't impressed with Goku's Kaioken times 20, even though Champa is weaker than Beerus. What this means is that in the movie, Super Saiyan Red Goku was enough to make Beerus sweat. Meanwhile, in the actual series, even Super Saiyan Blue Goku was not enough to be a threat to Beerus. So obviously, they massively nerfed Super Saiyan Blue Goku to where he's even weaker than the original movie Super Saiyan Red Goku. So this power scaling is just so foobar, it's not even funny. Now just to go with further proof that Goku from Dragon Ball GT has better feats than Dragon Ball Super Goku, Frieza, after four months of training, was able to push Goku to use his strongest form, Super Saiyan Blue. Meanwhile, in Dragon Ball GT, Frieza, after 23 years of training, was not even enough to make Goku leave base form. In the Tournament of Power, when Goku went Ultra Instinct, he shook the world of Void. Now, people look at this as such an awesome feat, but let me just explain something to you. Shaking is not a destructive feat. People say, oh, well, the world of Void was infinite. So that makes Goku infinite 4D or whatever else BS that Seth the programmer said. Well, here's, here's the problem with that. It's empty. It's got nothing in it. If I made an infinite amount of zero dollar payments, does that make me rich? Just because you do something infinitely doesn't mean you're actually making progress. He shook an infinite amount of nothing. So he literally shook nothing. How does that make him so strong? Goku, when he was powering up to fight Frieza and Cell, shook an entire dimension in his base form. So he's obviously still, again, his feats are on par with Goku at his strongest in Dragon Ball Super, and that's just in his base. But then people say, oh, but what about Mastered Ultra Instinct? Isn't it? You mean that form that Goku could only hold for 30 seconds before he had a stroke and ended up laying on the ground? Yeah, that's irrelevant, because guess what? When Super Saiyan 4 Goku in GT loses consciousness, he's still in Super Saiyan 4. 
When have you ever known a Saiyan to be able to keep their form while unconscious? But then people want to pull out Zeno as a trump card. Oh, well, Zeno's so awesome. Zeno could one-shot Dragon Ball GT. Zeno couldn't even one-shot his own universe. I don't even think Zeno is that strong. If you notice, when Frieza and Dispo were fighting, Zeno couldn't even keep up with what was going on, which tells you that his reflexes suck. I don't care that he has that haxy race attack. He has sucky reflexes. I bet you if the Dai Shinkan tried hard enough, he could probably sneak up behind Zeno, and before Zeno has time to do that Thanos finger snap, he could probably tear his head off. Zeno's not that great, folks. He's got slow reflexes. The Hacks attack is the only thing that really distinguishes him from the rest of his universe, unless they show otherwise. So imagine this. Imagine a tournament of power where instead of the Dragon Ball Super Universe, they invite the Dragon Ball GT Universe. That would be absolute overkill, and maybe I'll do a video later on how I think that would go.